So this is part one of a two-part video. In this first part, I'm going to talk about this Nikon and some of the accessories that we purchased for it and how we use it here to do vlogging on the Guru Brew. And then in part two, the next video, I'm going to bring out my old film professional Bronica camera just 10 years ago and show you all the bits and pieces of it, how it goes together and how we used to use it and make money with it back then. So hang out with me for this special photography edition of the Guru Brew coming up. Okay, so it's Christmas here. I got some packages in it and I think that some of them are for the camera that I was talking about earlier on the last video. This is the Nikon that I was complaining about, not complaining, but talking about. It's a 3200. And I'm just now getting used to it. I'm still struggling. Anyway, if you look back on that video, if you missed it, I'll put a link in the corner. Um, it has some problems with the audio and the battery life, so. I ordered a uh, microphone and a battery pack grip, so I think that's what these boxes are. And I like watching other people open their package, so I thought maybe you'd like this if I film it. If Steve gets bored of it, he'll just cut it out. He's like that. He just cuts things out. Then you never know. Oh, well, this is that, the scooter charger. So we'll let Steve try that out. And if he doesn't die, then maybe, maybe I'll do it. Anyway, now we can charge our scooter. All right, this... I love using Amazon, they're fast. I think we ordered this last Tuesday maybe. They're about. Okay, so here's the microphone that I was telling you about. Looks like they just kind of threw it in this box. Xing Yu. Xing Yu. Anyway, um, this is a universal microphone. And it's supposed to go up here. This is uh, the craziest part about it. It's this weird looking battery. Anyway, um, I still have to, you know, set the camera up and everything, but let's see what it looks like on windscreen. There's other videos that you can watch on how to turn this thing on, but you can see there's a 90 degree and 120 degree range. And then it just, uh, hopefully, just like that, looks pretty nice actually. And then this wire, how are we doing on time on the camera? All right, so that's another reason why I need to start using this camera. The um, the other point and shoot camera only allows like seven or eight minutes. Even, even if you have a large memory card. So this Nikon that I have here in my hand is good for 20 minutes. Um, sorry I'm fumbling around with this. I don't know what I'm doing, I admit it. 
Okay, so that plugs in there, and I still have to set it up, but it doesn't look too bad. And I have to put the battery in it too. It came with a little carrying pouch with a drawstring on it, but I, I probably will never use that. So anyway, let's put this aside for a minute and see what else we have here. Okay, so we'll mess with that in a few minutes. Might have to do a comparison test. Now this should be the battery grip and the two extra batteries. Okay. So this is the Velo BG N9 battery grip. Nikon doesn't make a battery grip for the 3200, so you know you have to get this one. There's other companies that make the battery grip too, but uh, this had the highest ratings. So we'll eat that later when I get hungry. This is the battery grip here. Let's see, um, inside this panel here is the battery. Let me show it to you. So there's the Nikon battery, and this thing is supposed to hold two batteries, plus it gives you a side shoot button. And you can see where two batteries will fit into here. And also, I can um, I can open this while it's still on the tripod and, and recharge. So that's another good thing about it. It looks like I'm going to have to run a wire up here for the side trigger, which is here. The battery door comes off here. Let's see if I can do that without breaking it. Okay, so there's the battery door, and that stores right in there, so you don't lose it. And then this whole camera, this fits up into that hole that you just created. And this tightens it on there. I know a little bit about this because I have other Nikon equipment and I've purchased battery grips for those as well. So it adds quite a bit of bulk. I think it looks pretty good on there. It seems to match the contour of the camera just fine. Plus it gives me this new shooting button here so I can hold it like this and shoot or I can tip it this way and just use the regular one here. Hopefully in this in this uh, box of stuff that I got from Amazon, there's two batteries in there. I bought a generic battery for this, and hopefully they'll hold up as good as these Nikon ones. I read um, good reviews on the batteries that I bought, so we'll see how that works out. Okay. All right, let me grab another box. Okay, so I even have a little prize in here for Steve. He's getting the all-in-one USB card reader for his PC. Looks pretty nice. I'll give that to him and he can install that. Here's those generic batteries I was telling you about. They're Watson brand, and these are actually 1,000 milliamp in the in the battery that I um, have here in the camera. That is, I want to say 1,100, 1,030. So this is just shy of this, and um, 
they got good reviews on them. If you go out and buy this Nikon, Nikon battery, it's $45. These were $20 a piece. So that's why I went with the generic. And then the last item that I got was another memory card. These are the ultra high speeds and they're rated at a 10. And I don't know if you know this or not, um, I didn't know this until I started making videos, but these these cards are rated with a numbering system and the higher the number like a 10 is better performance and speed and I was using fours and sixes in my other camera I believe this is a 10 and it's required for the higher definition of the uh, Nikon so I'll charge these batteries up and put my new card in maybe I'll show you the card reader once Steve gets it installed in his machine and um, we'll do some tests with the microphone and I'll also record how long it takes to use the battery so hang out for that that's it for now okay I'm on test two I'm right behind the camera I'm looking at the viewfinder about a foot away and now I'm at the side of the camera about a foot away and I'm speaking in the same direction as the camera's looking. Okay, now I'm down here um, next to these things on the table and I'm still using the shotgun mic and this whole test has been on 120 degrees so that's probably where we'll leave it if this is working. So I'm going to stop this and try. Let's see what it looks like. End of test. Okay, so I have my Nikon D3200 hooked up to the tripod, and that's what you're watching me on now. The audio is coming from my Blue Yeti microphone that's just up here out of the frame. If you missed my review and usage guide on the Blue Yeti, the nice USB microphone, you can watch this video here and I explained it in that video. What I'd like to do now is go ahead and compare this Blue Yeti audio track with the shotgun mic that I just bought for the Nikon. So let's go ahead now and switch to the shotgun mic that I just showed you um, for the Nikon. Okay, we are now on the shotgun mic. I really don't expect the audio quality of the shotgun to surpass the Blue Yeti. It's just of not the same quality caliber, but I do expect it to be as good, if not better, than the onboard camera of the Nikon. So let's go ahead and switch back to the uh, Blue Yeti once more. I also wanted to say a few words about the battery life since I received the battery pack and charged two batteries up instead of one inside this grip. I find that the battery life's a lot better. The battery is still sitting at half power and I am just about done finishing this part one of this two-part series. And normally when I make videos, I have to recharge my battery at least a couple times to get through all the takes and filming. So I like the battery grip, highly recommended. And I think you're going to also like the audio quality of the shotgun mic, even though the, the low cost is certainly better than the onboard. So this is a wrap up for part one of this part two series about photography and cameras. This is the new technology. Now, next time I make a video, we're going to take a look at that professional medium format Bronica that I was telling you about. I'm going to put together all the pieces and build a monster camera in front of you and explain a little bit of, about each one of the parts and what it's all about. It's truly a quality camera of its time. Just about 10 years ago, it, it just uh, started slowly slipping into extinction. 
Anyway, I hope you like this video series, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and look forward to part two. I think you'll find it very interesting about the Bronica camera. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. Bye for now. Hey guys, this is Steve. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to subscribe if you like this video, and be sure to rate and comment. See ya.